I want to talk to you today about some ways to prevent and manage lymphedema. So lymphedema is a swelling of usually the extremity, but it can also be anywhere in the trunk or anywhere where someone has had lymph nodes removed or irradiated for cancer treatment. Now, that is not the only reason that people can get lymphedema, but that's going to be our focus today. Um, I go through exercises and how to improve lymphatic drainage, and I'm always talking to people about ways to uh, improve the outcome through exercise, but I wanted to mention some very basic things that, to be honest, I don't think are ever even talked about. So I encourage you to share this with anyone you know who falls into this category because this could be the difference between them getting lymphedema or not. So for starters, avoid insect bites and burns. Now that may sound a little bit crazy. Well, how can I control that? Well, we do the best we can. So for starters, stay out of areas that are hot, swampy, marshy, where you're more likely to encounter mosquitoes or flies or any other types of insects and wear repellent and, and clothing to protect you as much as possible. As far as burns go, that could be a sunburn, that could be a burn from a stove or an oven. So obviously wearing, wearing mitts and gloves and everything to protect yourself. Stay out of the sun. We know that that's not a good thing anyway, except in a little moderation with protection. Um, and also wear rubber gloves when cleaning so that your skin is not coming in contact with the chemicals. And this is really important also because of oxidative stress. And these are changes that happen on a cellular level from things that we are exposed to environmentally and, and cleaning products are, are one of them. Another thing is hangnails and torn cuticles. So, you know, if, if somebody gets a hangnail, sometimes we bite them or we pull at them and, and it bleeds, and that is a perfect medium for bacteria. So what happens is the lymphatic system, which is in charge of defending our body against infection and other harmful agents, kind of, it's like it sends fighter pilots to that area to fight off that infection. And when the pathways have been restricted from damage to the lymphatic system, that's where there can end up being that backup of lymphatic fluid. Um, now that in particular would be uh, an important thing to note with somebody who has had breast cancer and has had an axillary lymph node dissection or sentinel node biopsy because the side that is affected, that arm, is at risk. So pay particular attention when getting manicures um, or just in general, you know, getting cuts and scratches on your hands. And if somebody's at risk for lymphedema in their lower body, it's going to be really important to be careful with pedicures. So avoid any clipping, cutting, uh, drummeling, anything that could result in an open sore. Um, if somebody does get scratched and they're at risk, they should wash that area with soap and water and then an antibacterial wipe uh, or antibacterial soap put some bacitracin on it, cover it with a bandage. And then over the next 24 to 48 hours, want to really be looking for signs of redness or swelling, anything that could indicate an infection. That could also be um, a mild fever. Avoid tight-fitting jewelry. So if somebody's at risk for lymphedema on, on this arm, they want to be really careful not to wear anything restrictive. So that could be a ring, a watch, a bracelet, um, and it's only on the side that is affected. Now, I'm a, I had thyroid cancer. I didn't have lymph nodes removed, but had I had lymph nodes removed or irradiated, I would actually be at risk for lymphedema in my neck and facial area. And not that I'm going to wear anything tight on my neck, but it's the same kind of consideration. So another important factor is that body fat or adipose tissue can actually retain fluid and interfere with the flow of lymphatic fluid. So it's not about body shaming, it's not about wearing a certain size, but losing body fat can help minimize the risk of lymphedema and minimize swelling for anybody who is affected by lymphedema. Um, things like saunas, whirlpools, uh, jacuzzis, steam rooms, these all elevate the body temperature and that can also increase the risk of lymphedema because your body heats up all together. It's, it's not just your arm or just your leg. Um, really important that we note that drink plenty of water. Got to stay hydrated because if we're dehydrated, we naturally are going to retain 
fluid. So exercising in a cool environment, maybe it's in front of a fan or in the air condition. And if you are going to take a hot bath or sit in a jacuzzi or, or steam room, make sure that you're doing lymphatic drainage exercises before and afterwards to open up the lymphatic pathways. And then of course, look for signs of redness and swelling. And if there is um, any change, you should notify your doctor right away and so they can rule out whether or not you have lymphedema. That of course is if you haven't already been diagnosed with it. The, the jury's a little bit out on this one, but I have heard people say that they have gotten lymphedema when they were on an airplane due to changes in cabin pressure. Um, that's debatable because that's supposed to be regulated, but nonetheless, you may opt to wear a compression garment when you're flying just to take that precaution. And then compression garments are also recommended while exercising, and it can help maintain the integrity of the skin and also uh, simulate somewhat of a pumping action, which is the same thing that exercise does. We want to pump that lymphatic fluid throughout the body. And remember, again, that our lymphatic system is what keeps us healthy. It filters out all the garbage. So that is all connected with having a strong immune system. So to finish off, I want to let you know that the four pillars of a strong immune system are a, a pro appropriate sleep, which is at least eight hours of solid sleep, a healthy diet, low in saturated and animal fats, um, more plant-based, but definitely getting enough protein and the right macro and micronutrients. Exercise. We all know that exercise is linked to the reduction and prevention of so many diseases. Um, and lastly, stress management. We are all under so much stress these days. You have to find a way to manage your stress and everybody has a different way. Mine is going outside, um, you know, out in the beautiful Rockies for a walk or being with my family, being with my dog, but find that special place for yourself and try and finish off or start each day with five things that you are truly grateful for. And we should all be able to, despite all of our, you know, circumstances to find something that you're happy and grateful for. On that note, have an amazing day. I'm Andrea Leonard, president and founder of the Cancer Exercise Training Institute and 37-year cancer survivor.